2009, Tim Brown, the CEO of the creative firm IDEO, wrote a book titled Change by Design, where he marks the difference between design and design thinking. To illustrate design thinking and design, he shares a project IDEO did with Acela, Amtrak's high-speed rail service. By the time Acela approached his company, they were narrowly focusing on the design of the train seats. Upon breaking down the human experience of riding a train, the IDEO team pushed back and went back to Acela with the argument that there are at least 10 moments that must be considered. Getting to the station, finding parking, buying tickets, locating the platform, and so on. Taking seats wasn't until step eight. This means there's lots of opportunities for innovation in steps one through seven. Brown calls this an example of design thinking. While design thinking has become somewhat of a phenomenon, there's a deeper interplay between these two that has been going on for centuries. The ancient distinction is between the thing made and the art that guides the making. Furthermore, in the ancient world, these two weren't separate things, but they were often embodied in the same person called the architecton. It's where we get the word for architect, but it means so much more than someone who makes buildings. In its humblest form, it means crafty or cunning person, and in its highest form, it means master builder. The architecton systematically makes things in the world with deliberation and intent as opposed to by accident. And what makes designing systematic is having a way of doing this. And the ancients certainly had uh, several words to capture this idea of method or way. One powerful one is logos. It's where we get the word for logic and the idea behind the sciences. In order to fully understand and appreciate the richness of logos, we have to get inside the mind of the Greeks, for they had a fascinating way of thinking about the world from different angles. Richard, McKe uh, Richard McKeon, a philosopher, has identified four different ways to understand logos. As words, as things, as actions, and thoughts. One way to wrap our heads around this is to consider technology, something so central to our modern lives, which has at its root the word logos. We usually associate technology with the world of things, but what would, what would it mean to have a technology of words, actions, and thoughts? One of the readings we assign MBA students at the Weatherhead School of Management is Peter Drucker's Innovation and Entrepreneurship, where he emphatically says, management is the new technology. It's a very different way of thinking about technology and logos. Richard Buchanan, a design and management scholar at the Weatherhead, and my advisor, has noticed a funny connection between the four kinds of logos and the four kinds of design disciplines in the 20th century. As human beings began to mass produce images and words as texts are essentially images, a discipline dedicated to the crafting and systematization of signs and symbols was needed, and communication design was formed. As the Industrial Revolution empowered us to mass produce things, a discipline dedicated to artifacts was needed, and industrial design was formed. As we needed to resolve issues arising from interactions with the computer, with other people, and with subject matter in particular environments, the discipline of interaction design was formed. And finally, like the example from Drucker, as we began to shape formal organizations based on an idea uh, or organizing principle, a discipline or technology of management addressing problems in systems was formed. Professor Buchanan calls this the four orders of design. I wish I could tell you that my personal pathway as a designer has been just as systematic and smooth. It hasn't been. Um, but in hindsight, my scattered journey begins to make sense in light of this framework. As a child, I loved to sketch and draw and was really comfortable with images and graphics. I even attended something called the Governor's School of the Arts. Instead of going to art school, though, I went to engineering school, um, as good practical Asian Americans do. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> It wasn't a good fit for me, but um, afterward, I went straight to architecture school for a short time, 
which wasn't a good fit for me either. But in both programs, um, I gained an appreciation for artifacts and the world of made things. Eventually, I did find a good program at Carnegie Mellon where I studied interaction design. There I learned what user experience is, that, sh that services can be shaped just like manufactured goods, and began to understand what it means to design a process, which really is how actions unfold in experience. Lastly, while working in a large corporation, I began to see for the first time that the organization itself is a product of human thinking, doing, and making. There are emerging um, communities like this one at Adaptive Path, where they're exploring the idea that, uh, of what it might mean to manage design or design management. And this is how I ended up in Cleveland and at the Weatherhead School of Management, where they've been, um, they've had an initiative called Managing as Designing, and also the, uh, a newly established Department of Design and Innovation. These four places give us uh, a range of ways to think about products, especially in a, in a wide sense. Uh, as diverse as the way the Greeks thought about the four essential elements, or the four essences. As fascinated as they were about earth, water, fire, and air, they were also in search of a fifth essence, one that could bring unity to this diversity. It's where we get the English word quintessence, or fifth essence. The transition from the art of making to the art that guides the making involves the ability to make connections and find common places. I think that's why we're so interested these days in uh, what we call T-shaped people, uh, which I think is a desire to go back to this idea of master builders that we once had. One of the themes I'm exploring for my dissertation is the concept of trace. It's not the only way to connect the pluralism of design thinking, but it's one that resonates with me. Here I have an image of Ariadne, the daughter of the king of Crete, who helped Theseus understand and escape the complexity of the system known as the labyrinth using a piece of thread, a trace. I'd like to share with you four variations on the theme of trace that have helped me make some connections. The first is trace as expression. If you've ever wondered how objects or images in the world are able to take on some kind of meaning, you've thought about trace as expression. It's our ability to make associations between things in the world and our subjective experiences. Not too long ago, my sister-in-law got into a car accident with our dog, Wendy. And thankfully, my sister-in-law is OK and doing well. But Wendy was thrown out of the window and went missing. Um, after trying to find her, eh, we, we couldn't. Um, we didn't think she would last the cold night. But after four cold nights, we got a call from uh, a couple that lives near the scene of the accident. They had found her, they found her alive in the middle of the woods, um, only because she was wearing this reflective harness. I wish I could share that Wendy survived, but she died uh, in an animal hospital. But because of this product, we were able to see her one last time and say goodbye. This product is fused with uh, meaning all over the place. And I think it goes beyond the idea of it triggering the memory of her. It's as if the product itself is the very embodiment of her. This is trace as expression. Unlike trace as expression, which gets its sense of beauty from static impressions, trace as transformation is a process activated by dynamic change. Asian Americans are a group of people in the United States who are neither Asian nor American. They're not Asian because they don't live in Asia anymore. Um, and even though many of them have United States citizenship, they don't quite feel American. They're Asian American. It's the idea of the third place. Like Starbucks, you have your home, your office, and the third place. <laughs> it's a fact of life uh, that uh, we're constantly pushing against stabilized categories. And the challenge is to change while carrying over into the new what was once part of the old. This mother, like many immigrant mothers, shared with me that, you know, even if her daughter grows up in the United States, she wanted her daughter's first meal to be a Korean dish. 
Another mother shared with me that it's okay if her two boys don't ever learn to read Korean. The important thing is they have to internalize the cultural stories that Koreans and the Korean diaspora have been passing on to their children for generations. Likewise, in all other human products, the challenge is to change while still remaining connected somehow to other parts of the system. Trace as transformation is the idea of maintaining connections in the midst of, di uh, in the midst of creative destruction. The third is trace as imitation, and it doesn't mean copying. It's like when we say to little ones, act like a gentleman or act like a lady. It's not that you're copying someone, but you're imitating or tracing the contours of this idea of what it means to be a gentleman. Um, this came alive for me when I was doing a project to uh, think how we can rethink the TSA. And we, while there are lots of inefficiencies there, what really intrigued us was not the ways we can op optimize the flow, but how human emotions play in the drama of experience. We saw people, uh, families and couples, crying, hugging, saying goodbye. For some, it might be a quick weekend trip. For others, it might be the last time that they say goodbye to each other. Sure, there are people who might have said goodbye to their loved ones at home, and this is just one more thing you have to get through at the TSA, but the argument is that there's this potential in the system to have characters wishing to fulfill their particular plots, and nothing about the current system supports this need. The last one I want to share with you is trace as restoration. To sustain the trace means to go back to the beginning, like Ariadne's thread that helped guide Theseus out of the labyrinth. I felt this trace about two years ago when I visited Korea to give a presentation the Weatherhead had done with Cleveland Clinic on patient experience. After the presentation, two in the audience introduced themselves, and one was the CEO of Yonsei University Health System. They invited us to their system, and when we did, we were told an amazing story. You see, at the heart of Yonsei University Health S System is a hospital called Severance Hospital. It was the first modern hospital established in Korea in 1904, and Cleveland's very own Louis Severance, a devout Christian, prayed and was moved to donate $10,000 to start this hospital a century ago. Yes, it's the very same family name that built Severance Hall, where the Cleveland Orchestra plays, just a few feet from, uh, from here. This is what it looked like when it was first built. Some caregivers and patients. And what it looks like today. This was an inexpressible experience for me because I had heard about Yonsei University all my life. Uh, my father, back in the 70s, was the first in his family to attend university, and Yonsei is his alma mater. I also grew up in a devout Christian family. Coming to Cleveland, I can hear, almost, the echoes from the 70s and back a century. There's this uncanny connection, and I have these deep personal roots here, even though I've only lived here for about three years. This is trace as restoration, a way back to the beginning. The theme this year at TEDx CLE is collaboration, and one of the challenges to integrative work is the diversity of opinions, thoughts, and values that we all have. I believe master builders are a community of individuals who understand the pluralism of design thinking and are also able to make imaginative connections so that all can participate in the making of our world. I also believe that one can begin to become a master builder in any one of these places. If you're a graphic designer or maybe good with words, perhaps you majored in literature, I think words is a great place to start. If you're an industrial designer or an engineer familiar and comfortable with the world of things, perhaps things is a good place to start. If you're into human behavior such as psychology, uh, anthropology, or any of the social sciences, it might be most natural to start from actions. And if you're into holes, as in W-H-O-L-E-S, uh, theology, public health, management, I think thoughts is a great place to start. We make our worlds with words, things, actions, and thoughts. 
and the world can use more master builders. Thank you very much.